Hello and welcome to Nexus, the Religious and Cultural Dialogue Programme. I'm Rebecca Masterton. That was a clip from Wings of Desire by Wim Winders about angels. Many religions around the world acknowledge the existence of angels or angelic beings. In Islam, belief in angels is one of the canonical beliefs. But are angels just figments of the imagination or even just physical phenomena that have not yet been explained? With me to discuss this are Dr. Manjir Samantha Lawton, author of a book called Punk Science, which makes a radical reappraisal of the traditional Western division between science and spirituality. And Diana Cooper, who was visited by an angel during a personal crisis, which inspired her to change her life. She now organizes workshops around the world and is author of numerous books on angels. And Tony Lobel, a practicing Christian scientist and journalist. Welcome to the program. Thank you for being here. Uh, so, Diana, could we start with the, the experience you had of being visited by an angel? Yes, this was the first of many experiences. Right. 25 years ago, I was at rock bottom in total despair, and I had no religious background, no spiritual understanding, no psychic background. And yet, I threw myself into a chair and said, if there's anything out there, show me. And an angel came in, a beautiful golden being of light, and showed me my future. It totally changed my life. And then I changed my life, and 10 years later, they came back again. Oh. And this time, they asked me to work with them and tell people about angels. I said, no, thank you. <laughs> people think I'm mad anyway. I don't want to do that. <laughs> and the angels said, well, who's doing your work? Is it your ego or your higher self? And I oh. said, point taken. And then three angels gave me all sorts of information which went into my first book on angels. And from then, I've worked with the angels, and they've helped me and I think millions of other people to change their lives. And how do they appear? What, was the, what do they look like? They or? usually look like lights. Mm. Now, an angel will appear to somebody in a form that's acceptable to them. Mm -hmm. And so we tend to see them as people with wings. Now, of course, they have wings because those are radiations from their heart. Mm. Angels are heart-centered beings. And people, as they start to develop angelic qualities, they too develop wings wow. in the etheric. And you know, you go with, you'll meet somebody and they kind of enfold you in a feeling of peace and love. Yeah. That's their wings, their angelic wings Gosh. coming around you. It's fascinating. Yeah. Um, and the depiction of angels goes back at least uh, 5,000 years to ancient Sumeria. Um, angels have permeated the cultures of Central Asia and beyond ever since. Let's see some of those. The word angel comes from the Greek angelos, which itself could be considered as a translation of the Hebrew word malach, meaning messenger, which in Arabic is malak, etymologically suggesting a being responsible for carrying messages between the human world and some other realm or realms of existence, someone who is an intermediary between down here and up there. Zoroaster, or Zartusht, was living in Persia around 650 BC when, as a result of what he claimed were angelic communications, he spread a monotheistic religious message that subsequently became the religion of the Persian Empire. In those images, angels appear to be humans with wings, and as you said, they appear to us as we'd like to. Um, Manjir, you've uh, actually explored the phenomenon of angels from a scientific perspective. I mean, we could actually have a whole program on your book, but um, I mean, what, what is your theory of what angels are from a scientific perspective? View. Well, it's not exactly a theory. It's actually uh, what I've done in my book is I've looked at um, how modern science, that is the science of quantum physics and string theory and uh, this cutting edge physics, mm -hmm. actually provides ideas and uh, mechanisms by which angels could exist. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, quantum physics, which is um, the physics that really came about in the 20th century, um, said, look deep into an atom. So, for example, this table looks mm -hmm. very solid to us. Mm -hmm. what quantum physics tells us that if we look deep into this table, 
deep into the atoms, we actually find quite a lot of empty space and uh, these subatomic particles. And if, if we look deep into those, uh, we actually find something that isn't quite there at all. It's a kind of idea. <laughs> and this idea actually um, interacts with our own minds. So some physicists are actually saying that consciousness yeah. is actually fundamental to the universe. So if we put that together with string theory, which is a, another theory in physics that came out of the 20th century, mm -hmm. that says that there's many dimensions to the universe. So if just out of simply looking at orthodox physics, we now have a universe of many dimensions of consciousness. So these could be those higher realms that we've been mm. talking about earlier. So that's where I think that these angels could reside, in these higher dimensions of consciousness. So what, what are they from a sort of scientific, uh, I mean, from a sort of traditional religious viewpoint, they're, they are sort of messengers and they appear in, in, in these forms, messengers from God or sort of uh, beings that help people. I mean, w would you describe them as uh, sort of energy, balls of energy or balls of light or, I mean, the forms of consciousness? Yeah, they're forms of consciousness. Mm -hmm. as, as Diana said earlier, uh, they can appear in different ways to people mm -hmm. and, and we expect now to angels to have wings and uh, to appear in a certain way. They are actually formless and in fact we all are and they're fundamental. Mm -hmm. We are formless. <laughs> you know, we just appear to have form and it's no different in all the different realms of consciousness that are out there. That's fascinating, and uh, oh yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, we just we just have a different sort of form, well, different density of form. Well, we than... we actually can change form, and I think Diana can say that uh, people actually do things like shape shifting. Oh yes, they do. Yes. Yeah, I've yeah. heard about that. I mean, do. they talk about that in uh, mysticism as well, the mystical yes. traditions yeah. in yes. Islam yeah. as well. Our form isn't fixed. And yeah, uh, yeah uh, Tony as well. You you are involved in Christian science, and that involves healing. Um, I mean, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I'd love to. It's certainly fascinating to hear these views as well and to share mine. Basic to uh, healing in Christian science is, is an understanding that there is a living, loving God who mm. loves us all unconditionally. And um, angels come in, as you said, we're talking about messages and messengers. Uh, in Christian science, um, in the ideas um, that I study as a Christian mm. scientist, Angels are thought of as God's thoughts passing to each and every one of us in exactly the, the form we need them. Um, we think of them as spiritual intuitions, pure mm -hmm. and perfect spiritual intuitions. And, and they are, of course, um, fundamental to a healing practice because if it's God who heals, in order to be a healer, you have to be listening for and hearing those ideas. Mm -hmm. And I was interested that you mentioned ideas, actually, because Certainly in Christian science, one of the ways we refer to ourselves as God's creation is as God's ideas. Mm. So it's interesting that as you've been looking through that microscope, as it were, you've, you've discovered that sense of ideas as a basic unit, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I think it's fascinating the way that science is now proving what seers and mystics have said for centuries yeah. and centuries. Because actually a lot of the traditional scientists have said, uh, well, you can't prove it, so therefore, and it's like, well, what happens when you can prove it? <laughs> and now well. so many people are actually having these experiences mm. themselves. And so once you've had the experience, no one can take it away from you. And you also um, engage with angels to heal people. How, how do you do that, Diana? You can work with the angels and ask them to come through you. You can literally hold up your hands and ask the angels to touch your hands and make them into golden angelic hands and either touch a person or send that energy to somebody. Mm. But of course, you've got to step aside. Mm -hmm. It has to be the angel does it. You're just a channel for right. this energy to come through. That's fascinating. And um, Manji, I mean, what would you say, again, from a scientific perspective, uh, how, how, I mean, do, do, According to science, is there a different view on how angels appear, what they look like, or as well, beings? Or science do, as a whole doesn't really explore uh, the whole question of angels. Um, what I've looked at is how, um, you know, it's not so much proof of angels, yeah. but how, with the science that we have already, um, how uh, there's no reason why angels shouldn't exist. So mm -hmm. it's not about proving or disproving, it's saying what we have already shows uh, a possible mechanism. 
But uh, what I've certainly looked at is um, that they can, uh, they're beings in other dimensions. So there's almost like a, a step down process by which other dimensions can actually contact ours. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, there's a researcher um, in England who did some work where he was taking some measurements from people's skin, just the frequencies mm -hmm. of people's skin when they were meditating. And he found that there were really high frequency spikes at certain times, which he recorded. And the person looking back says that that's when their spirit guides or angels appear to them. Wow. So we actually can start to measure. And when they tried to do it again, it didn't happen because you have to be in a certain <laughs> sort of non-attached state, state yeah. to, to yeah. have them appear. But it's interesting. So it may be the sort of lower harmonics of these higher mm -hmm. dimensions that we've actually recorded now scientifically. So they're sort of, uh, 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 in a way, as you say, they're, they're sort of frequencies. So, so we, we each yeah. have a frequency. When and we talk about heaven where the angels reside as mm. the seventh heaven, the seventh dimension. Yeah. Yeah. And we can start bringing that energy down now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, also we, people talk about benevolent angels as well. I mean, there are also fearsome angels, aren't there, Diane? Have you, have there are two things here. One is we live in a plane of duality. Mm. So everything in the light has its counterpart in the dark. And that is something we try to avoid. And you only attract it by giving it attention. Right, right. If you keep your thoughts pure and clear, you will only attract angels of light. Uh -huh. However, an angel is love. Mm. It brings peace and love. I would say that you never felt fear, but you might feel awe of right, an angel. Right. And that's understandable because they are mighty, awesome beings. Mm -hmm. Remember somebody saying they'd been to a mountain, they were going to climb the mountain and the angel of the mountain was a vast, awesome being wow. and appeared to them and reminded them that they needed to have respect for that mountain. But that's different. Most angels will come to you at an energy you can cope with. Mm -hmm. They will enfold you with love. And if you don't feel a sense of love, then close down. It's right. not an angel of light. So yeah, um, so yeah, we also we have to be receptive the, to them, but also yeah, if we, we yeah. if you can we sense it's a fearsome sense. angel. Yes. Yeah, I mean, what, what, Tony, what do you say that uh, Christian Science might say about fearsome no, that, that's, angels? Well, it's interesting to hear the way you put it. I think um, one of the ways of Mary Baker Eddy, who's the founder of Christian Science, yeah. des describes angels is we know their presence by the love they create in our hearts. Right. So it's a purely mm -hmm. positive, constructive sense of, of um, spiritual intuition, ideas, mm. experience, but they always identify themselves by creating love in your mm. hearts. Um, but what I would say in terms of the negative, which is interesting, is just in a, in a sense echoing what you said, that everything that is e evil in this world is trying to mimic that which is good. Mm -hmm. So in as far as we're tempted by evil, it comes as thoughts coming to us mm. as you know I feel angels come to us pr predominantly as thoughts mm. from from divine love from spirit and so in effect what we need to do is watch our thoughts mm. and uh, to the degree we keep them so open to those angel thoughts those that create that love in our hearts and make us act in love towards mm -hmm. others then we're leaving less and less room for negativity and thoughts that might tempt us to commit evil mm. stealing murder whatever you want to you know, so I think it is a, a mental uh, experience to watch our, our thinking and keep it really open to those spiritual mm. intuitions, those spiritual ideas, so that the other cannot tempt us. I mean, yeah, I agree. You yeah. have to watch your thoughts all the time. Because I mean, also we've heard I've I've, I've heard of one story where uh, there was a man who, again, had no sort of spiritual or religious background. He was an mm. atheist, and he was on his hospital bed, dying. And then um, he looked in the corner of the room, and suddenly. So I said, oh no, and he sort of, he saw something waiting for him in the corner yes. of the room. Yeah. And that was sort of the angel of death. And that's, that's a sort of a, a fearsome angel. I mean, have you ever come across... Uh, a but not as fearsome angels. Mm -hmm. People, of course, see their angels as they're dying. Talk to almost any nurse and mm -hmm. they'll tell you that they've seen the angels coming to collect people. Nobody passes alone. Mm. And so it's a wonderful experience. We think of death as the end. They think of it as a door opening and it's a beginning mm. for people. I mean, I've, I've heard that as well a lot in hospitals. Um, it's actually quite mm. common. Um, yes, that's right. Yeah. I've heard uh, um, from a medical background. Yes. Yeah, have you come across uh, yeah. that? Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, um, yes, people seeing their relatives especially 
um, as uh, as people are passing on yeah. and reporting, yeah. seeing long long way. That, that's quite uh, uh, common. And people knowing when they're going to pass, they know pr pretty much a day before mm. that they're going to leave the next day, which is very interesting. Um, I think because they're seeing all these people around, they they know it's coming. Yeah, because I, I heard in one hospital where they say that someone said, "Oh, they didn't know that their sister had died, and mm. they were lying on their hospital bed, and they were talking." To, they said, oh, I've just had a long conversation with my sister, and they didn't know that they'd died the week before. So everyone in the hospital was saying, oh, that means that this person is also mm, going, yes. going to die. Yes. Um, I mean, those aren't angels, though. They're sort mm. of... Uh, but, I mean, what, but they're family and helpers. Mm. We all have ha helpers as well, and we have guides. Mm. And then we also have our angels who come in at birth and look after us throughout our lives. Right. And they hold the divine blueprint for our life, the highest possibility, our potential. And they constantly whisper that to us. But of course, we've got free choice. We yeah. can say, no way, yeah. and do something else. So, so, yeah, we could say that, I mean, again, uh, I, think, I think the mystics in Islam say you're sort of, God guides you through your intuition. So if you're in tune with your intuition, mm. you can be. Um, I mean, Diana, did, did you have some sort of reaction from your friends and family around you as well? Sort of? Well, when it, the very first time, I didn't tell anybody for mm. a long time. And it was only when I started to move on and into much more spiritual circles.